So, in the last class we learnt about special matrices, we saw symmetric, orthogonal, Hermitian and unitary matrices and we briefly talked about uh, things called similarity transformation. Okay. Now, uh, today I am going to talk about uh, spectral decomposition, matrix diagonalization, normal modes and then some more uh, a, a, a few other things about matrices I will mention. Okay. So, we will start with spectral decomposition, we will restrict the discussion to square matrices only. Okay. And uh, now sometimes what happens is uh, we saw that a unitary transformation, a unitary transformation can, can take uh, matrix A to A tilde okay. and, uh, and what you say is that, uh, is that unitary transformations on a space preserves the norm of the vectors in that space okay so 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 what you are doing effectively is like you are rotating the coordinate system okay so so by rotating the coordinate system now your matrices which uh, become different okay so it's it's like like looking at the matrix in a rotated coordinate system okay now uh, why is this useful when would you you imagine this to be useful so so you can imagine that you take your coordinate system you rotate it to such a way okay so so this is a rotation of coordinates okay so so you are looking at the matrix in the new rotated coordinate system okay now now you can imagine that you that you do one particular rotation and in that in that rotated coordinate system your matrix becomes diagonal okay so can you rotate the coordinate system in such a way that the matrix that was initially not diagonal becomes diagonal okay now why are we interested in diagonal matrices because diagonal matrices the eigenvalues are easy to calculate okay so this is one example of uh, of uh, transformations that we that you often do Okay, so 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 one classic example from from chemistry is uh, is in the is in the moment of inertia matrix. Okay, so in general, if you have a polyatomic molecule, okay, then uh, it has three rotational degrees of freedom. Okay. If you want to write those rotations okay, as three independent rotations, you have to find something called the principal directions. Okay. So, what do you do in calculating the principal directions? So, we look at the moment of inertia matrix okay, or the or actually it is a tensor. Okay. So, uh, this tensor is defined the following way. So, you call I x x equal to sum over I m i what we are thinking is that is that you have a rigid body okay and it has various point masses okay so these are the various point masses okay and uh, and uh, these are these are located at some coordinate r ri okay so these are the coordinates and uh, each point mass has xi yi zi okay then you define ixx as mi times ri which is the with respect to some point which is usually taken as the center of mass. So, so the origin is usually taken as the center of mass. So, you take r i which is the distance from the origin minus x i the x coordinate of that point whole square and usually these point masses are the actual atoms. Okay. So, if you have a polyatomic molecules then you do for each atom. So, you sum over all the atoms. Okay. So, this is this is the x x component of the moment of inertia matrix okay and uh, similarly you can do for y y and z z okay so and then and then you have the x y component okay which is defined as minus sum over i m i x i y i okay so so what this moment of inertia matrix looks like it looks like this so you have i x x i y y 
i z z along the diagonals and then you have i x y i x z i y x i y z i z x i z y Okay, so, this is what your moment of inertia matrix looks like and clearly, clearly you can see that i x y equal to i y x. Okay, so, therefore, the matrix is symmetric. Okay, so, so it is a symmetric matrix. Okay, now, this matrix appears very naturally when you are, when you are uh, describing the the rotational when you are writing out the rotational Hamiltonian for a for a multi for, for a polyatomic system. Okay? So, this moment of inertia tensor appears naturally. Now, the main issue is that if you just use any if you just use some arbitrary coordinates then this moment of inertia matrix is not diagonal. If it is not diagonal then uh, then it becomes very difficult to write to 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 actually calculate the rotational energy okay so so what is done is that uh, you do you 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 transform the coordinates okay so you transform the coordinates till this matrix becomes diagonal so what is done is you go from you you go to some coordinate i t i some coordinate which i represent by i tilde is a moment of inertia in the transformed coordinate Okay, and this is done by using by by using some sort of some sort of uh, similarity transformation. Okay, so so I'll just put R I R transpose. So so this is a rotational matrix. Okay, and uh, if you if you do this, okay, remember for a rotational matrix is R orthogonal. So this is nothing but R I R inverse. Okay, so so what you are doing is you are rotating the coordinate system. Okay. And uh, in this coordinate system, so rotate so that i tilde is diagonal. Okay. So, so what have we done? We have we, we have taken this uh, initial matrix which was not diagonal and essentially rotated the coordinate system so that it became diagonal. Now, in this coordinate system, okay, you will have three directions, you will have the coordinate axis. Okay, so, the coordinate axis are basically the eigenvectors, axis in transformed coordinate system are the eigenvectors. Just call them V i eigenvectors V i. Okay. So so what we have done is we have rotated them, and when when you find that it becomes diagonal, then the axis that you have in this rotated coordinate system is nothing but the but the uh, the axis points along the eigenvectors. So and so what you can write you can write this i i tilde once you have this, you can write it as sum over all the eigenvectors you can write it as lambda i v i v i transpose okay so so if you take a vector and multiply it by its transpose okay then you will get a matrix so it's like it's like taking one vector that looks like this and multiplying it by its transpose that looks like this so you will get a matrix Okay, and uh, so so i tilde you can write as lambda i v i v i transpose. Okay, and uh, so this procedure of writing a matrix in terms of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors is a very general procedure, and this is called spectral. This is either referred to as diagonalization or spectral decomposition. Okay, so, you write this matrix in this form and this is called a spectral decomposition. Again, this is a very commonly used technique. Okay. So, what we say is that when you do a spectral decomposition of a matrix, you are basically finding out its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. Now, now, we look at one uh, very 
practical application of uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is what is called the normal mode. So far we talked about rotations, now, now if we talk about vibrations of molecules of polyatomic molecules. Okay, these are expressed in what are called as normal modes. So, so in some sense the eigenvectors for vibrations of polyatomic molecules are exactly the normal modes. Just as what we saw in this case that, uh, that when you transform your more your uh, moment of inertia uh, into a diagonal matrix, okay, then the rotational matrix becomes diagonal. I, I forgot to mention but, uh, but these directions are referred to as principal axis. axis and so and so your i tilde I should mention that looks like i a i b i c. So, in this in this transformed coordinate system it just looks like this it looks like diagonal in the with the and 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 i a i b i c are called the principal moments of inertia. Okay, so, I A, I B, I C are called principal moments of inertia. So, so when you convert it into a diagonal matrix, these axes, the A, B, C directions are called principal axis. Okay. Now, now, now what we are doing is a very similar thing, but we are doing for vibrations. Okay. So, so for ro rotations you have these principal axis and principal moments of inertia. For vibrations of polyatomic molecules, what you have is what are called normal modes. Okay, so, what is a normal mode? So, let us take a very simple example. Okay, this can be you can think of it as a CO2 molecules. So, if you take a CO2 molecule, okay, so it is a linear molecule okay, and uh, we will just restrict to one dimension 1D. Okay, so, that means that means uh, you just have you just have uh, this has coordinate x1, this has coordinate x2, this has coordinate x3. So, you just have three coordinates. Okay. Now, uh, now, now what you will do if you want to express these vibrations, what you will say is that, uh, is that uh, you will write the equations of motion for the first particle. So, the first particle the equations of motion will be m the let me let me take the mass of this as m, mass of this as little m, mass of this as m. Okay. So, so, so my equation of motion will be m d 2 x 1. by d t square okay, is equal to minus k should, minus k and uh, let me take for convenience that uh, this has a spring constant k and this is k. So, so when you are modeling vibrations you think of this bond as having some spring with spring constant k. Okay. So, so if I write this as minus k x 1 minus x 2. Okay. So, this is the this is the equation of motion for this for this mass and you can see that it so, so, so x 1 is in some sense it is the it, it, it really reflects the, the displacement from the mean position. Okay. So, you can think of x 1 as a displacement from the mean position. Okay. So, x 1 x 2 x 3 are displacements from mean position. So, so, so what I mean is if, if you are at the mean position okay, then uh, basically x 1 will be 0, x 2 will be 0, x 3 will be 0. So, so when x 1 equal to x 2 equal to x 3 equal to 0, you will all the all the atoms will be in their mean positions. Okay. Now, I can write for x 2, I will have something like this. x 2 minus x 3 and uh, I can write for the for the x 3 particle for the third oxygen atom, I can write m d 2 x 3 by d t square this is equal to minus k x 3 minus x 2. 
okay. So, these are my 3 equations of motion okay and I can write these equations of motion in matrix form okay and uh, what I will what I will write is I, I can write this as uh, as uh, so instead of instead of writing this second derivative with time I will just use x 1 double dot x 2 double dot x 3 double dot okay and uh, this I can write as uh, as the following matrix. So, I can write it as uh, so, so now, now x double dot is minus k by m x 1. So, minus k by m and then it has plus k by m x 2 and it has 0 and then, and then here it is uh, you have plus k by m k by little m and you have for x 2 you have minus 2 k by little m and for x 3 I have k by m okay, multiplied by x 1, x 2, x 3. So, all I have done is I have just rearranged this and written it in, in matrix form okay. and then and then here I will have 0, I will have plus k by m and I have minus k by m. I have minus k by m. So, so, I wrote this these 3 equations in this form ok and what you want to do when you when you calculate the normal modes is uh, this is a I mean if, when we do differential equations we will see this this is a system of linear second order differential equation with constant coefficients ok and, uh, and the general solution can be written as minus omega square. x 3 ok. So, so it is it is like this is the matrix version of of uh, solving a uh, simple harmonic oscillator uh, one dimensional simple harmonic oscillator. So, so, what does this mean now now I wrote this in matrix form ok and uh, what you can immediately tell is that omega is nothing but an eigenvalue of this matrix. Okay. So, so what we want to find out first is what are the eigenvalues and what are the eigenvectors ok. So, so, if I give you this matrix then you know that you are referring to this system. So, so, so as soon as you have this system CO2 ok you can write a, you can write this matrix and what we are doing is nothing but calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors ok. So, when you calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors you will get what are called the normal modes ok. So, uh, so so, these are what are these are nothing but eigenvalues and these are the corresponding eigenvectors ok. So, what we did we had only this differential equation ok. Now, when you set it to minus omega square x 1 x 2 x 3 you are basically asking for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors ok. And uh, I would not do this in detail, but uh, you know cal by by simple calculation ok we can get 3 eigenvalues ok the 3 eigenvalues are omega square equal to 0, omega square equal to k by m and the third eigenvalue that you will get is, is omega square equal to k by m plus 2 k by m ok. So, these are the 3 eigenvalues you will get and the corresponding eigenvector ok. So, so these are your eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors are so for omega square equal to 0 your eigenvector will basically have x 1 equal to x 2 equal to x 3. Ok, I remember you so, so you can take any value for x 1, x 2, x 3, but basically they should be the same ok. So, remember eigenvectors can only be determined up to a constant they cannot be uniquely determined. So, in this case you have x 1 equal to x 2 equal to x 3 and now you can see that if x 1 equal to x 2 equal to x 3 then each of these 3 atoms is being displaced in the same direction by the same amount ok. So, each of these being uh, uh, each of these atoms is being displaced 
in the same direction by the same amount. So, this actually refers to a translational. This refers to a pure translation. Okay. So, uh, so, so it is not actually a vibration, this is, a, this is one mode when all the three atoms are moving in the same direction. In this case, your eigenvector looks like x1 should be equal to minus x3 and x2 equal to 0. So, when you solve for this eigenvector, you will find that x2 has to be equal to 0 and x1 and x2 have to be opposite signs. You can take any multiple of this, but they have to be opposite signs and this is what is called a symmetric stretch. So, what you have is that your center carbon atom is, is, uh, is fixed and you have these is moving in one direction, this moving in the other direction. Okay, the two, the two oxygen atoms moving in opposite direction. So, this is a symmetric stretch. Okay. Now, the third one, okay, this has eigenvalue. So, it has x1 equal to x3 and x2 equal to minus 2 capital M by small m x1. Okay, and this is this is what is called an asymmetric stretch. Stretch where where uh, your two oxygen atoms are moving in the same direction, so they are moving in the same direction by the same amount, and the center atom is moving in the opposite direction by some other amount. Your carbon atom. So this is your asymmetric stretch. So, what we can see is that just by calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you can get the normal modes and you can identify what is a symmetric stretch and a symmetric stretch. And what we see is that the normal modes, normal modes of this, uh, this linear CO2 molecule, okay, okay, we restricted the CO2 molecule to move only in one direction okay, and we naturally find that these are the two normal modes. Okay. So, symmetric and asymmetric stretch are not things that we choose for convenience, these are the natural normal modes of this system. And you can do this for, for uh, multi-dimensional polyatomic atoms too. Okay. Now, I will just, uh, before I end this, I will just mention a couple of things. There is something called an ill-conditioned matrix. Okay. So, this is, uh, this has to do with, uh, do with uh, solvability. by numerical methods. Okay, so, numerical methods are a very integral part of, uh, of matrices. In fact, in fact, there are very large number of numerical methods that involve matrix operations. And now, uh, and now uh, a matrix is said to be ill conditioned. So, if it is very sensitive, if the results are very sensitive to the values. Okay. So, uh, what happens is uh, you know you know often often you are trying to solve a matrix equation okay so 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 if you have ax equal to b okay now you just make a small change in a okay if you get a very large change in x then you then you say that uh, matrix is ill conditioned so small change in a leads to large change in x. So, x is the solution. Okay. So, so you are solving for x and what you say small change in a or b okay, we leads to a large change in x and uh, so, so this is called an ill conditioned system or an, an a is said to be an ill conditioned matrix. Now, a matrix there is a there is a way to check for the for this ill conditioned matrix by doing something called the condition number. So, I will call this k of a. This is the absolute value of the largest eigenvalue divided by the absolute value of the smallest eigenvalue. Okay. So, so uh, if, if k is large, then a is ill conditioned. Okay. Now, now, now many times you are evaluating, you, you are solving these matrix equations by some numerical procedure. Okay. Then you have to really worry about whether the matrix is well conditioned or ill conditioned. Okay. So, so this is one, uh, one thing about matrices that I want to mention. The other kind of matrix I will mention is what is called a sparse matrix. So, a sparse matrix uh, has 
very few non zero elements okay so that means you you have a matrix where you have basic essentially you have you have some numbers c1 c2 c3 and most of it is zero okay so most of it, most of the matrix is just zero okay and you just have a few numbers that are non zero okay so uh, so you, you might have c4 here somewhere there so so a sparse matrix has very few non zero elements okay so now again there are uh, very many special numerical algorithms for calculations involving sparse matrices. So, if you know that if you know that your <laughs> the, the matrix that you are working with is a sparse matrix, then you can come up with very uh, nice new numerical methods for these systems. Okay. Uh, so, so um, I will just I will just mention again that uh, many times matrix operations are done numerically ok. So, so uh, suppose you want to you you often deal with uh, often matrices are very large ok. When, when I say very large you might deal with uh, you might deal with 10 raise to 6 by 10 raise to 6. So, million by million matrices and uh, you know you cannot you, you cannot calculate the determinant the usual way or the inverse the usual way. So, so all operations so determinants inverse etcetera these are uh, Eigen values Eigen vectors all done using numerical methods. Okay. And uh, many of these numerical methods are actually iterative that means you start with some guess and then you keep correcting it and, uh, and, and you go on. So, so many many methods are actually iterative that means start with some initial guess and keep on improving. Okay. So, so, what I just wanted to tell you is that you know new numerical methods are an integral part of uh, matrix methods okay. and uh, these are some of the most important things that, uh, that people do in all branches of science and engineering. Okay. And uh, I will conclude this discussion on matrix. Now, in the next, next lecture, I will do one illustrative problem involving rotational matrices, matrices using matrix of rotations. Okay.